Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how air moves into and out of the lungs. I could have also called this why air moves into and out of the lungs. So let's take a look real fast. And what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a picture of the lungs or a drawing of the lungs. I'm not gonna make it that big because I'm gonna be drawing other stuff. So if we remember our lungs look kind of like this, all right? And then here's what's going to happen is on the lungs back down in here you have your diaphragm okay we have the diaphragm down here if you notice the diaphragm is kind of arched right now this is this is exaggerated a little bit but then we have our lungs and then we have um, the ribs. Now remember, the ribs come all the way up and around to the, che the chest and go all the way around to the back. If you've ever seen a picture of a skeleton, the ribs come all the way around. I'm gonna, because I'm drawn two-dimensionally, basically my rib cage would be going around the lung, something like this. Okay, so, and then between the ribs, I also have some muscles called intercostal muscles. If you ever ate um, ribs, then you would know the, basically what you're eating is intercostal muscles. So um, you have two sets of intercostal muscles. You have external intercostals and you have internal. So I'm not gonna go too much into labeling muscles here, but I am gonna put external intercostals. Okay, and the main thing I want you to know here is that you have an intercostal muscle between the ribs. External means these are on the outside. Um, just on the inside, we're going to have internal intercostals, but I'm going to get to those in just a minute. So this is inhalation. Then we're going to have some muscles that actually attach to the rib cage that come from the neck. Um, and I'm not really going to require you to know these, but you have the sternocleidomastoid. And you have some other muscles called scalenes. Okay, and then you're going to have some chest muscles too that are on here too. The pectoralis minor is going to play a role in this also. Here's what I want you to know. Is when you breathe in, first of all, some, some terms. I'm going to have PO. PO stands for the pressure outside the lungs. Okay, right now, it's the air that's all around you. PI is going to be the pressure inside the lungs. Okay, so that's my pressure inside the lungs. So I'm going to put PI in here. And I'm going to put PO out here because that's the pressure outside the lungs. Now, when you're at rest, when you're at rest, the, the diaphragm is exactly where it is here. Um, you can see there's, the lungs are there. When you're at rest though, your pressure outside equals the pressure inside the lungs. Okay, so no movement occurs. And this is why air is not coming in. Okay, so we have no movement occurring right now. Okay, and so just so we know, this is when you're at rest. This is between breaths. Right there. Okay, so now, let's take a look what's going to happen when you breathe in. So here's my lungs. And I'm going to draw them a little bit smaller this time. Because when you go to breathe in, what's going to happen is your the muscles I just showed you, the sternocleidomastoid, the scalene, um, you have your pectoralis minor, your serratus anterior, and your intercostal muscles, the muscles contract. The muscles contract. 
And so what's going to happen is that's going to pull. That's going to open up the chest cavity where the lungs are, the pleural, or the, where the lungs are. It's going to open that up. So the lungs are going to expand out. The diaphragm is also going to flatten. So instead of being up like this, now the diaphragm's going to flatten. So now we're going to look at it something like this. Okay. I'm going to make my lungs bigger here. And now, in fact, let me. I want to make this a little bit flatter so you can see it. So now my diaphragm has flattened. So when you go to inhale, what's going to happen is some muscles will contract. and pull the lungs up and out. So as you see here, we're getting the pull, the basically the lungs are expanding, okay? So, uh, and then the diaphragm flattens. Okay, so what has happened now is we have increased our volume. We increased the volume of the lungs. And there's a rule in physics that says if you increase volume, it leads to a decrease in pressure. So now, our pressure outside the lungs, our pressure outside the lungs is greater than the pressure inside. So what's going to happen now is air diffuses in. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. So air diffuses into the lungs. Okay. So my, my muscles contract, the lungs are gonna expand up and out, the diaphragm flattens, and so we get an increase in volume, which leads to a decrease in pressure. So now I have more pressure outside the lung than inside, so air is going to diffuse in. Let me, so air is going to come into the lungs. And this is on inhalation. This is when we breathe in. So I'm just gonna write that right in here. Inhalation. Now, let's talk about when we exhale. When we exhale. So now I have these big lungs like this. Right, I've just taken my breath in, and here's my lungs. I have my flat diaphragm. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is we're gonna have some muscles, such as the internal uh, intercostal. If you remember last time, we talked about the external intercostal will help pull the lungs up and out. Now we have the internal intercostal. Okay, and then I'm gonna have some chest muscles also that are gonna help. And your abdominal muscles will help with this too. So now as these muscles contract, basically what's going to happen is they're going to pull in on the lungs and basically force them to become smaller or they're gonna decrease the volume of the lungs. And then the diaphragm, like you saw, 
is going to also come back up. So once again, this is the diaphragm. So now we have the opposite. We're decreasing the volume. So when you decrease volume, um, so I'm going to just say you have muscles contract and diaphragm goes back to where its original position. Okay, the diaphragm goes basically back to its original shape. And so now what's going to happen is the pressure inside the pressure inside the lungs is going to be greater than the pressure outside. So air rushes out or air is forced out. Okay, so when I go to breathe in, I'm going to put exhalation here. When I go to breathe in, I use the external intercostals, as well as, like we said, the sternocleidomastoid, scalene muscles, uh, pectoralis minor, serratus anterior. So you have muscles that will pull the rib cage up and out, and the diaphragm flattens. When you go to exhale, it's the opposite. You have some chest muscles and intercostal muscles and abdominal muscles that are going to contract and basically make the, uh, the lung smaller. And this is on exhalation. So we have a PO is less than PI. So air is forced out. So I am going to do this like this. And here comes my air leaving the lungs, going up the trachea. And it goes out. And that's it for breathing in and out. One last thing I want to put on here. So as this goes down, we get a decrease in volume. This is just to stay consistent. We get a decrease in volume, which leads to an increase in pressure, and this is inside the lung. And that's it for breathing in and out.